parts of speech the speech which we speak in the form of sentences consists majorly eight different parts which are noun pronoun verb adjective adverb preposition conjunction and interjection a noun furtherly divided into proper noun and common noun a proper noun is that which identifies a single entity and is used to refer to that entity for example sara sara is the particularly a name of a person and next one is common noun a noun that identifies a class of entities and may be used when referring to that instances of a specific class for example friend while uh, we introduce some uh, our friend uh, to someone we generally specify him as a friend rather than uh, furtherly saying his name so common noun uh, furtherly has a proper noun too okay hello everyone i am here and here i am going to explain in brief about corpus verbs so what is verb verb is nothing but which tells us what the noun is doing or it describes an action being done by someone or something now let us see about uh, different kinds of verbs okay so here's an example he is eating the food salad here what is he doing he is eating so this eating is nothing but a verb now uh, we are going to see about what is transitive verbs this is nothing but which links the verb with the object so here the previous example eating is linked to the fruit salad so this kind of verb is nothing but transitive verbs in transitive verbs this do not have object linked to the verb in previous example we saw fruit salad linked with eating here we don't have any object linked to the verb for example locked or jumped we don't have any object linked with this verbs so let's see another three kinds of verbs action verbs these are words which describe an action for example running swimming walking these kind of actions these verbs are depicted so these are called action verbs helping verbs helping verbs are nothing but which tells us more about that verb here advancing is linked with or so this or is nothing but helper or you can say as helping verbs linking verbs um, here the subject that is ronaldo is linked with the noun that is football player so this kind of linker that is 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 nothing but a linking verb thank you everyone myself dana shivasana i am an assistant of first year dd reddy Today in this video, I'm going to speak about what is pronoun. That is the part of speech. Um, so moving on, pronoun is a word which is used instead of a noun. Suppose, for example, I say Harry is absent because Harry is ill. So instead of using Harry twice, I can also say Harry is absent because he is ill. The word he is known as pronoun. Now there are eight kind of important pronoun which needs to be studied. The first one is personal pronoun. Personal pronoun is something which is of three types: the first person, second person, and the third person. First person is I and we, which, which denotes the person speaking. Then the second person, that is you, you, which denotes the person speaking to. And the third is he, she, it, he, she, it, or they, which denotes the person speaking of. That is the third person. Now, the second type, of, the second type of pronoun is reflexive pronoun. which means when the subject and object refer to the same person suppose i say he killed himself so he is both the killer and the killed so here the subject and object refer to the same person he the third type is emphatic pronoun which means for the sake of emphasis suppose for example i myself went for the signing of a deal the deal was very important so i myself went the word myself broadens to dimension of a whole sentence it is known as emphatic pronoun now the fourth type is demonstrative pronoun 
Now, the pronoun which are used to point out the object to which they refer to is the most demonstrative pronoun. Suppose I say, this is a book. So, this is a book. Now, the book was mentioned to you by the word this. And the word this is also known as demonstrative pronoun because, because you use that word to refer the book. That's why this is known as demonstrative pronoun. The fifth one is indefinite pronoun. Now, when I the indefinite pronoun is a pronoun which you know uh, refers to a person or a thing in a general way, but not in a particular way. Suppose, uh, for example, um, they say India was reached on the top of the world. So here, I do not mention any particular person or a thing, but I say, but I use the word they. And they is a general word. It means to anyone, not to any particular person. So it's known as an indefinite pronoun. The sixth pronoun is a distributive pronoun. Now, what is distributive pronoun? Now, the first, the pronoun that refer to person or a thing one at a time. For example, each, either, neither, like these, like neither, not at one, not the other, the two. So each, either, neither, example of distributive pronoun. The seventh one is relative pronoun. It's called a uh, big. Uh, a relative pronoun is a pronoun that refers or relates to some noun going before, which is also called antecedent. And it also works as a conjunction between, because it connects two statements. Okay, so it uses, it is used to connect two statements, like a conjunction. Suppose I say, she worked in the kitchen, which was like a bathroom. Okay, so here, which is a relative pronoun because it connects the two statements, right? The last one is very easy, that is interrogative pronoun, which is used to ask questions like what, whose, whom, why. Uh, suppose I say, which color do you prefer? Who is that? Whose uh, sweater is this? Or what do you want for the dinner? So all these are interrogative pronouns, which are used for asking questions. Thank you. This is all about pronoun. What is an adjective? Adjectives are describing words. Adjectives can describe the way something looks, tastes, smells, feels, or sounds. For example, hot milk, big boat, loud rocket, shiny shoes, and sweet gum. The words cold, big, loud, shiny, and sweet are all describing words. Or adjective. Hello, I am Sara Jain this site. I hope you all are doing good. Uh, while doing the parts of speech, prepositions and conjunctions play a very important and a crucial role. So in today's class, I will be telling you more about what prepositions and conjunctions are. Okay, so moving ahead with it. Prepositions. Prepositions are words that show you where someone or something is or tells when something is happening. That uh, means where gives you the place of the object and when tells you the time. So prepositions are used when you are talking about the place and the time of a particular incident or when something is happening, okay? It can also be used to show a few other relationships such as to whom you give something or if you do something with or without something else. So it is also used to correlate some relationships when you are giving something to somebody with or without something else, fine? Common prepositions. So these are the prepositions we use in our day-to-day -day life like about, amid, behind, but, for, near, outside, throughout, up, upon, to, over, off, from, by, below, among, above, across, after, beside, inside, on, regarding, under, within, without, underneath, since, onto, into. Few uh, examples I would cite over here is of prepositions. Uh, we often say that I would sit sit beside you. That means I want to sit sit next to you. 
then we also use between that i will sit between both of my friends okay that be between means sitting uh, in between both of your friends okay you got that then inside i am inside my house regarding i want to talk to you regarding the seminar being conducted by the college or you know we use all of these we use all of these um prepositions very frequently now coming on to conjunctions so conjunctions are those words that link ideas together ideas can be sentences here. so if this is a sentence and this is a sentence this is a conjunction which is placed in between them which for which acts as a joining word okay so these can also be known as linking words so there are three main types of conjunctions coordinating subordinate and correlate correlative moving on coordinating conjunctions coordinating conjunctions are probably the conjunctions that are most familiar with that you are most familiar with there are seven of them for and nor but or yet and so you can also remember this by the acronym fanboys so f stands for for a for and n for nor b for but o for or y for yet and s for so okay so you can remember the coordinating conjunctions with this acronym okay subordinating conjunctions usually, uh, usually a subordinate clause will describe either the background circumstances of the independent clause or will give more detail about one part of the independent clause there are a lot of subordinating conjunctions but some of the most common ones include after although because even though if once since though unless until when whenever wherever where while so these are all the subordinating conjunctions you can see that the w words are also there so this can be a uh, one hint for you that wherever uh, the w words are there are uh, five w's right where when what and where okay so these three there are three okay okay moving forward correlative conjunctions correlative conjunctions are very similar to coordinating conjunctions but they must be used in pairs okay so the hint over here is pairs these pairs are worth memorizing because occasionally the act will test these to see if you know which word belongs together both and and either or neither nor not only but also whether or these are all coordinating conjunctions used in pairs okay examples of uh, correlative conjunctions both my sister and i okay do you either want to go dancing or go to the gym the soup contains neither onions nor garlic so these both come in a pair pair is two words together ठीक है मूविंग फॉरवर्ड दैट्स ऑल एंड वी हैव कंप्लीटेड द प्रेजेंटेशन एंड इट वाज रियली गुड आई होप सो यू मस्ट हैव अंडरस्टूड व्हाट आई वाज ट्राइंग टू टेल यू एंड दैट्स ऑल फॉर टुडे थैंक यू फीलिंग्स आर एक्सप्रेस्ड बाय एवरी वन ऑफ अस एंड इट इज हियर वी सीक द हेल्प ऑफ इंटरजेक्शन टू एक्सप्रेस आवर फीलिंग सो इंटरजेक्शन इज आल्सो अ पार्ट ऑफ द स्पीच and there's nothing but a mood which helps us to express our feeling our emotion and it is usually followed up by an exclamation mark at the end suppose someone in a football match played very well how will you say him or her that you played very well you will say bravo you played well so the word bravo is an interjection it helps you to express your feeling for him that you are appreciating him right so bravo exclamation mark you played well okay this is a whole sentence Now suppose you won the match. How will you say? Hooray! We have won the match. If you say we have won the match, 
doesn't make any sense like it doesn't you know it makes sense but it doesn't uh, express your feeling that you are happy that you have won the match how would you say hurray you have won the match so in this way it tries to express your feeling to bring out your emotion to use interjection right it is nothing but a simple word a simple small word which helps us to express our feeling or emotion that's it